Morning, church. Morning. Great to see all of you this morning. We have about four, five, ten. We got just a couple people in the church this morning. And uh, uh, for all of you that are listening in this morning, I hope you're listening in today. We our protocol talks about um, this COVID thing, and as much as we're all tired of the COVID thing, um, we certainly have some some protocol that we have to go by. And um, we've had several of the church family that have been involved with some COVID things, although none have been uh, in the in the sanctuary and have not contracted it from the sanctuary. Uh, it's all been from the outside, but uh, we have some folks that are home that uh, are church family. And the protocol, uh, at least up until this week, was that we, uh, that we go online. And so that's what we've done this morning. Uh, this part does not make me joyous. Um, Christmas and Jesus make me joyous. But having you not in this sanctuary does not make me joyous. So this morning, we're going to uh, do everything that we can to bring the good news of Jesus to you. And uh, a couple messages that we have for you is that we're still on track to do uh, Christmas Eve services. And we will be talking to you week by week now about the services and whether we're going to be able to have them or not. We probably will look at our protocol because CDC guidelines have changed a bit at the end of this week. And so we will be looking at our protocol and what we do uh, for the next weeks ahead. So stay tuned. We'll, we'll let you know as soon as we can on where we're at with that. Next Sunday, Case, Pastor Casey is going to be uh, speaking on Christmas joy and uh, Christmas Eve services. We have two set right now at 6 and 9. The, the reason for two uh, to try, because last year we had nearly 80 people in our Christmas Eve service, and we want to try and split those up. So if you could kind of let us know ahead of time which service you may be coming to, so we've got some idea of numbers. That would be very, very helpful for us. Also, uh, families in need, we continue to, uh, uh, to um, look for families that are in need for Christmas so that we can help. And if anyone knows of anyone, please contact the church uh, office um, and let them know or give me a, give me a text. Um, I think everybody has my number now. Just uh, text me or Pastor Casey and let us know that you've you know of someone in need, and we're more than happy and willing to, to help out with some families like that if we need to. Last week, uh, Pastor Casey and I carried out all the toys for tots that you all donated in here. Uh, we had several arms full that we carried out of here, and it was a, a huge success uh, of all of you stepping up and bringing in gifts and uh, toys for kids that uh, weren't probably going to have very much Christmas this year, and uh, you all may, are going to make a difference in some lives uh, I think we have some pictures of that, but we'll, uh, we got them up on the screen, yeah. That's just a, kind of a quick snapshot of the back seat and the back of my vehicle, and I think Casey might have had a few things in his vehicle too, and we took those over and delivered those, and um, uh, they were very they were very excited that we brought, brought them, and they, they asked that, uh, we, that we send the message to the Forever Grace family that they're very grateful for all that we brought. So thank you for that. And with all that said, this morning we're going to uh, we're going to go to prayer. This morning, I know many of you have prayer requests. And uh, by the way, Shirley Busack, who uh, was uh, sick with COVID, is uh, back home now, and she's improving, and we're uh, grateful for that. Uh, I know the Brown family has been infected uh, f affected by the by the virus, and uh, so we continue to pray for our for our families here. Uh, there are many others. Uh, around the community and uh, to spiking a lot of, as we all know. So we'll continue to pray for, for the families uh, in that way. So with that said, let's, let's go to prayer this morning and let's prepare ourselves for this uh, worship time that we're, uh, we're starting on this morning. Father, thank you. Thank you for this day of life you've given us. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for the Advent season where we can stop for just a little while and listen to your word, to hear your Christmas music, to be joyous. Forgive us, Father, when we get too busy. Forgive us for not thinking of you first. But Lord, this morning, 
in this building that is usually full of people. Today, it's a building that's full of your Holy Spirit coming down upon us and those that are listening in this morning. As we go through the Advent time, as we go through communion time, as we sing your Christmas songs, as we read your scripture, may you receive glory, Father, because we want you to be glorified. We thank you for healing of Shirley, for healing the Brown family, for being with the Jones family. And Father, this morning, we praise you in all things. We ask that those that are on the front lines, those doctors and nurses and aides that are in the midst of this terrible virus, May they feel your comfort and your love this morning. And for those that are on the front line out working every day, the law enforcement, the fire department, the EMTs, Lord, keep them safe. For our teachers, for our administrators, for our kids that are going in and out of the schools, Father, we pray you keep them safe. So this morning, Lord, Thank you. Thank you for being here for us. Thank you for lifting us up. And may at this time we, we find joy and love, and peace in all that you are to us. So this morning, Father, may you receive all the glory. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. The Advent reading today comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5. It says, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We relight the candle of hope and expectation. Let this candle remind us of the great hope we have in Christ the Messiah and in God's promises. As we, relight, as we light the candle of love, let it remind us to prepare our hearts for the coming Christ. Let us pray. Father, guide us into confession of our sins. We know that in the greatness of your love, you have promised to forgive us. Cleanse us as we prepare our lives for the coming of Jesus again. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. If you'd like to, uh, if, you're, if you're at home... If you'd like to go grab a piece of bread and juice, we're going to go ahead with communion this morning, um, even though uh, um, it's, a, it's a different way for us virtually to, today. If you'd like to take a moment and run to the kitchen and grab a piece of bread and some juice, 
Um, you know, you could, uh, you could probably even make a case for uh, uh, your donut and your coffee this morning if you want. I don't care. It's, it's, it's a symbol of what uh, Christ is about. So this morning as we, as we break bread together, uh, let, me, let me remind you that there's a, there's a reason for communion, and that is so we remember Jesus. Remembering Jesus because he asked us at the Last Supper, you know, to break bread together, to join together, to break it. So many times from this pulpit we've talked about how when he fed the 5,000, they broke bread that the little boy had in his lunch pail. And he handed it to the disciples, and the disciples shared that bread. This morning, we're sharing with each other in a different way, maybe. But it's communion where we break bread. We break it together so that we can share the body of Christ that was broken for each one of us. And then the blood of Christ that was shed for each one of us. So this morning, if you'll gather with us, if you'll take your bread, the body, and your juice, the blood, and together we share Christ and we remember. going to sing. We're going to sing a couple Christmas songs, so um, join in. Austin's going to put the words up on the screen. We're going to sing God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. Uh, we're going to sing the first three verses of that this morning, so join in. Sing along with us. Uh, the, the words will be on the, on the screen for you there at home, so let's sing together. Casey? God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. God, our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came, and unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same, that in the Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy, oh, tidings of comfort. Then said the angel, let nothing you affright. This day is born a Savior of a pure virgin bride to free all those who trust in him from Satan's power and might. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort. And now another favorite of so many is it came up on a midnight clear and we're going to just uh, sing a couple verses of that, the first two verses of that, uh, as Austin puts that on the screen for you today. It came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old. Angels bending near the earth to touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men from heaven's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through Skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er all the weary world. Above its sad and lonely plains, 
And ever o'er its babble sounds The blessed angels sing Two great Christmas songs. So, Casey, would you uh, pray for us? Sure. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for <clears throat> this opportunity to worship you. And as we're in this building right now, Lord, we realize that the seats are empty and um, that this worship service isn't about pleasing the people, but Lord, it's about worshiping you. And we can do that wherever we are. And we just pray that you are lifted up this morning as each person watches from their home, Lord. And as we're here gathered this morning as well, that you would be lifted up in this service. And Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy and that we have a reason to worship. Thank you for the joys of Christmas and, and just a reminder of your love today. Lord, that you are a God of love, even when we don't feel it, even when we don't see it, that we know you love us, Lord. And we pray that you would be high and lifted up in all things today. And we love you, Lord, and we pray this through Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Casey. Well, we had to change our format a little bit this morning, as um, most of you would know. We had Linda Sell was going to sing this morning for us, and uh, she'll be she'll be with us next week and uh, sing some special music for us. I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to take a few moments this morning and uh, talk about Christmas love. Uh, Casey and I have uh, we spent beginning in October we we started putting together the theme of where we wanted to go for Christmas uh, through the Advent season and. Um, You'd think that would probably be just really easy because it's the same story, right, over and over again. But uh, as we put it together, we wanted it to be everything that it could be for all of you. And so even though we have a theme, each week uh, the body of this message comes from what God wants us to do. Last week, Casey uh, spent time talking about hope. And it was a wonderful message. And this week we're going to talk about love. And um, so in the body of this message today, I hope you find all the love that you need. I was, I was reminded, uh, we're going to be in 1 John here in just a little bit. Austin will put that up here for you in just a little bit. We're going to be in 1 John. But I, I, was, I was really spending time trying to determine exactly... Uh, what kind of a message should come to you today? And I got to thinking about Christmas and Christmas past. And I'm old, so I've had a lot of those now. But I recalled a particular year, and I was in my late 20s. I had two daughters at that time. And we were... Just got a new new house, and we have a mortgage, and we have utilities to pay, and and quite honestly, my budget was really really thin. Maybe some of you have had that happen in your lifetime. And I recall Christmas morning getting up, and the joyous part of Christmas, knowing Jesus is alive. He's born. He's here. Well, as, the, uh, as things go, and all of you know this, you know, you usually try to travel to Grandma and Grandpa's house or fa family's house. And the afternoon was for us to go to my mom and dad's house, Grandma and Grandpa's. My parents love Christmas, especially my dad. He always made certain that his kids... His kids and grandkids had something. Now, he wasn't an extravagant man, so he wasn't going to be an extravagant gift. But it came from his heart. And generally, I got a pair of socks and a shirt, you know, and I was grateful for it. Maybe a jacket once in a while. But on my way over there that day, all I could think about was, how am I going to pay for groceries this week? Because, see, we'd spent more than we should have. We'd gone over where we should have gone. Not only was I worried about groceries, but the utility bill was due at the end of the week. 
and the mortgage was due next week. How am I going to pay those? Well, we got to mom and dad's, grandma and grandpa's house, and we had a great time. And my dad didn't give us a present like he usually did. He handed us an envelope, the adult children, an envelope. I thought, oh, things are a little tough for them, too, I'm sure, you know. So give me a nice Christmas card. That's fine. I put it in my pocket. I went home, and that night, I opened it up. Now, remember, this is 40 years ago. There was $100 in it. $100 40 years ago was a lot of money. Well, it's actually a lot of money today. But 40 years ago, it was everything. I thought of that story because how do I place a value on that? How do I value that gift? And then as I put it in context with where we're at, How do I value this gift that God gave us in the name of Jesus? Gifts are important. Giving giving to others is extremely important. But the value of those gifts are even more important. So as we read 1 John... We're going to be in four, and the, and the main verses are 9, 10, and 11, but I want to start with seven this morning because I like to give you a little lead into it. We're going to, 1 John 4, and we're going to be with seven as Austin puts this up on the screen this morning. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. Now, verse 9. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. And verse 11 says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Would you pray with me for a moment? Father, thank you for your word. I pray you be with this messenger today. That this message that you've given this messenger is received by those hearing in the way that it's designed. May their ears be open, may their heart be full, and may they hear the word of God today. This messenger is a sinner saved by grace. Nothing special, just words that you've given him. And may you receive the glory for that. In Jesus' name, amen. So I jotted down the word usefulness. When I think about, when I think about how I measure the value of God's love, how I measure this gift that he gave us, I wrote down usefulness. So what is the usefulness of a gift to us. Now we all get those gifts sometimes that we go, what am I going to do with this? That wasn't the case with my hundred dollars. I knew exactly what the usefulness of it was. But if we put it in the context of the baby Jesus, do we really understand exactly what that usefulness is. In those scriptures, in a verse, I think it was verse 9, 
it talks about the usefulness of the gift, so we might live. In John 10.10, 10, this is not First John, but this is John 10.10, 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have the life and have it to the full. Now some of your scriptures, uh, this is the NIV, but some of your scriptures like the King James Version, I believe, or the New King James, probably talks about having abundant life there at the end. It's about abundant life. Or to have it more abundantly. What a great promise. I have come that I may have life. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Great promise. So I, I wrote down in my notes here today or the other day when I was doing this it's that God has made you special. He made me special. And he made us for a special purpose. And I wonder how many of us have figured out what that purpose is. Some of you have. Some of you are still working on that. It took me years before I determined what I believed his purpose was. In Ephesians 1.4 it says, he chose us. He chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Leave that up there, Austin. For he chose us before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He handcrafted us. He, he prepared for us to be a unique creation. And why? I believe for the purpose of bringing glory to God. Yeah. For the purpose of bringing glory to God. I'm here. You're here for the purpose of bringing glory to our God. We all want to strive for that Matthew 25, 21 that you'll see on the screen, and you've all seen this one before, when it talks about, well done. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things, and I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. So what is the cost of a gift? When I think about the cost that God had when he sent his only son, and I, and I really put this in perspective this week, and I thought about how, how, how difficult that was, because he knew what the answer was. He knew that when he brought this son into the... By the way... You ever think about why didn't, you know, first of all, Jesus' ministry was like from age of around 30 to 33. I mean, that was basically his ministry area. Now, he did some things as, as a child, but that's basically his ministry area. So, why didn't God just bring, why didn't he just bring Jesus in when he was around 30? Why didn't he just introduce him to, to us when he was around 30? I mean, why, why all that, why all that? time before that and I I think for me it's do you know how much we love babies he wanted us to learn to trust and to know but he also wanted Jesus to be able to walk the earth and know it just like we do from birth to death and all that in between, right? So this Jesus who, we love babies, we had, you know, Crystal Sigmund last week was talking about, you know, she's got a new grand, 
child and uh, we, we love new birth. So what's not to love about a baby Jesus coming in and the way he came in and the way that whole story, that's, you know, it's an old, old story. You, you all know the story. You've heard it for years. Even if you're only 12 years old, you've heard it for years now. It's the same story. It's the same Jesus. But it's a Jesus who came for a, with a purpose. As a child, so we would learn to love him. As a child, so he would know what we live through, what we had to deal with, what we do deal with. So, cost. God knew that the cost would be great because when he brought his son here, he knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to be sacrificed. I, so I put this in perspective this week and I started thinking about some of you, you, you families that are within the church that have, that, have, that have sons. And I began to think about mine who sits back here in this corner every Sunday the like 6'2 gentle giant guy that you all come to know and love. Could I give him up, sacrifice him? You know, we all know the Isaac story. Could I do that? And maybe some of you at home are thinking, could I give up my son like God gave up his son? I don't think I could. But I'm grateful that the cost for God, he was willing to give all. So the value, the value is great. So how do we measure this, this love? How do we measure this love that, that has been given to us? And I think we have to measure it by the effectiveness it has on us. Is it what it is it what it's supposed to be? Does it do what it's supposed to do for us? For instance, if I get a toaster for Christmas, I'm pretty sure it's going to make toast. If I get a coffee maker for Christmas, I'm pretty sure it's going to make coffee. If I get a new set of golf clubs, <clears throat> is it going to make me a better golfer? I can't hear most of you right now, but I'm saying most of you are going with, nah, probably not. But I expect it to make me a better golfer, don't I? I expect it to make toast for me. I expect it to make coffee for me. So this gift of Jesus, the, the love of God, what's it intended to do for you and me? to change us, to take us from where we're at and make us what we need to be and make us better. That's that love. Austin, would you put back up on the screen here for me that uh, 1 John 4, and would you uh, jump to uh, 9? Let's, I want to look at that. I want everyone to look at this again. Um, we, we read this before. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. And 10 says, this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Hang on to that for a second. It's, it's not suggesting here that we love God, but God loved us so much, he was going to make certain that we had all we 
needed to change and to be better because he could see we weren't, we weren't going to be able to do it ourselves on our own. And then Levin says, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Hang on to that one right there. You ever think about the word ought? I'm sure you have it. Why would you think about the word ought? We use it quite a bit, don't we? Well, we ought to go get groceries. Well, we ought to go downtown. Well, we ought to mow the grass. We ought to, we, we use ought quite a bit, but we don't really think about what the word ought is. So I took a moment and looked up, because I'm weird like this, I looked up, like, what does this really mean? Because it's in the scripture, right? Ought's in the scripture. Um, so I wrote that the Greek, it's, the Greek word for ought can be translated must. That's knowledge for you. The root word means actually means to owe something. You owe a payment, you are under obligation, you must pay it back. So let me go back up here and say, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also must love one another. It's not a, it's must. We have to love one another. And I question some days how we're all doing with that. It seems like in the environment we're in right now, we don't show that love as often as we should. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. I love this scripture. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. And 15 says... Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. It's such a, it's such a, such a good example That we don't that we don't take these we did we didn't light these this morning and then and then put them down here where you couldn't see them. We we left we lit these lights and we leave them open the the Christ candles we we leave them open every Sunday when Haley comes up and lights these and gets them all going for us and we we don't we don't take them then and hide them we we keep them open. And that's the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to let our light shine. We're supposed to let others know that Jesus Christ died for us. He was born for us. He died for us. And I have to tell you, in this empty building this morning, there's a lot of echoing going on in these walls. But that's okay. What I just said needs to be heard two and three and four times. So if it echoes all over and through the town of Montmorency then to God get the glory so if you get a coffee maker and it doesn't make coffee what do you do you go exchange it I would probably exchange it for some golf clubs but it, that wouldn't help either because it still wouldn't make me better. So how effective is the gift that Jesus is giving us, that God gave us through Jesus? It's very effective. If we but use it. This message... makes me think of John 3.16 every time I went through this 
And I've been through this message several times because I rewrote it about a half a dozen times to, to change things and move things around because it just seemed like there was so much that God wanted me to know about his love. And I kept thinking, this is John 3, 16. Everything I've done, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So that we might live through him. Not that we first loved God. But the scripture told us because he first loved us. <clears throat> so, the last part of this message as I close today. I wrote these words down in my notes. <coughs> Excuse me. How do we treat people? How do we treat people? Can I talk to you guys for just a second? You, you spouses and you children can listen in if you want, but I want to talk to the guys for just a second. We need to treat our wives better. This whole message about love and God sending his son Jesus to change us and to make us better. We put bread in the toaster, it comes out toasted. We put coffee grounds in a coffee pot, they come out with this aroma and this coffee to drink. What are you putting in to show Jesus how much you appreciate his gift, guys? You can begin by treating your wife differently. Some of you already are. As my mom used to say, if the shoe fits, wear it. Some of you aren't. Oh, in the sanctuary and in those settings, those, those church settings, we, we, all, we are all lovey-dovey. Yeah, those words. But sometimes once we walk out of there and, and we're so preoccupied sometimes with, with life, with getting home to see the NFL, which, by the way, is a waste of time. Something on our mind, so we just snap at our wives, guys. Don't be condescending. Treat them with love and kindness. Because behind closed doors is where it's most important. So guys, I, I beat up on you a little bit, but wives, the same is true for you. Kids, same is true for you. You can treat your parents as God treats you, and that's with love. Parents, you can treat your kids with that love too. If you're not doing that right now, if that's a challenge in your family, if that's a challenge in your life, I encourage you to take this Christmas love, this love that God gave you through the form of Jesus and change. Because you really can't glorify God the proper way if you're not doing in your family what you're supposed to be doing. And that's caring for one another. I stepped on some toes probably. But that's okay. God steps on my toes from time to time. He tells me, you can't do it that way. You have to love everyone. For that I'm grateful. For that teaching I'm grateful. For this Jesus, I'm grateful. Let's pray. Oh, how we love you, Father. Oh, how we love you. 
We're asking you, Father, to help us be better. To take what we have to the next level. To take the love, the hope that you, that you gave us, the love that you gave us, and take it to the next level. And then to spread the good news of Jesus, but also to treat those around us with love and to not, not let our light be dimmed. May our light shine bright. May we be willing to say, Jesus, you are the light of the world to everyone we see. So this morning, Father, and even though this building is way too quiet this morning, Father, I know your spirit is here. It's felt this morning here. May your spirit be alive in everybody's home right now where they're at listening. May they feel your love. May they know that you're there for the purpose of letting the light shine bright so that we can glorify the God who loved us before we loved him. Be with us now, Father, as we go from here, as we go about our time, I pray you keep us safe, that you would walk with us. Protect us, Father, in a way that you can, like no other. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen. We're going to sing Silent Night. Seems like a good song to close with, doesn't it? Couple of a uh, couple verses of Silent Night. We sing in two cases, two, two two verses. All right, sing Silent Night. message was meaningful to you and this morning as we go from here and be reminded that that uh, there's a lot going on outside and we will be back with you this week to let you know uh, exactly what the service will be like next week I'm really praying and I hope you all pray that we're back in the building together uh, that's where we want to be so we look forward to that and with that we say go in peace I love you all